So this is Ted Flight here with Golden Skate, and I'm joined by Tanya Quiet the 1996 U.S. Silver mm -hmm. uh, Medalist uh, at, the U at the U.S. Nationals, longtime competitor mm -hmm. uh, in the 90s, <laughs> and uh, a commentator now for yes. Ice Network. Yes. Sort of bring us up to speed on what you've been up to since uh, since you stepped away from competitive skating in 1998. Wow. Well, you know what? I coach skating, which is really great. I have that interaction with a lot of different kids in different levels, um, which I truly enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot more recreational kids, not too many competing like on a serious level, but it's so much fun because they truly love to skate and improve. Um, I also work for Winterhurst Ice Rink and Strongsville Ice Rink, OBM Arena mm -hmm. and Serpentini Arena, mm -hmm. that um, I do paperwork, donations, deposits, you know, managerial kind of stuff, sure, which yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, and I do the commentary for Ice Network. Yeah, and that's so, how we, and exactly. that's we have known you since exactly. like 2009. Yeah, it's exciting. And I truly love my job at Ice Network, um, especially having studied communications in college, being mm -hmm. able to use my degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is fantastic. So, did you know that there's? Uh, I found a drinking game online uh -oh. around around figure skating <laughs> that that prompts uh, participants to take a sip every time Tanya Kwiatkowski names a transition position in a combination oh, spin. Oh, I did not know that. And a, and a, and a bonus sip. For every time you call a hair cutter spin. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is this is your this is your thing. Is, wow. Is you like to clearly like to note the different the, well, the positions in a in a combination spin, which I, I think I now I do because there's so many, and mm -hmm. I think you know so many people. Um, there's some that are better than others, and some that are more unique than others. Sure. So um, it's it's fun to acknowledge them, especially when they do it well. Sure. And I think now with the no, it's not necessarily the new judging system, but a judging system that wasn't in effect during you know your time. My time, competing. right? All those positions are now critical. You know, Absolutely. How you transition from one to the other, what the positions are, and holding them—that's the big thing. And, yeah. Like holding them is so many. So many times you see a skater lose a level because they don't hold it long enough, mm -hmm, which is like, mm -hmm. oh, you did it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of too bad they can't get like a half credit or something. <laughs> sure. So now, as a commentator, do you recall, you know, when you were skating, listening to commentators that you particularly gravitated towards or enjoyed, and do you have oh. any sort of models in that regard? You know, I I, I always enjoyed. Scott Hamilton, just because he was always so positive okay. towards the skaters. I think I try to look for something positive because, you know, as a skater in the past, from the past, you know, you remember those performances that maybe they don't go so well. And you remember what you feel like when you step off the ice knowing that you didn't put your best foot forward and it wasn't what you know you can do. Um, you know, to try and focus on something positive is important because every skater trains hard, everybody works hard, everybody wants to do their best. So I think as a former skater, I want to just focus on as much positiveness as possible or mm -hmm. suggest even suggestions to improve a skater's choreography, mm -hmm. composition score, anything to help them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we're currently at Skate America. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 years ago, you were a silver medalist at this very event. I was, yeah. Can you believe that <laughs> is now two decades past? It doesn't seem like, well, it seems like it, but it doesn't seem like it, I mm -hmm, guess, you mm -hmm. know, but it was, and that was such a cool year because Michelle Kwan was first, I was second, and Sydney Vogel from the U.S. was third, so we swept the podium, yep. which was, I think, maybe the only time that has happened at Skate America, so it's it was, um, I'm gonna check it, was it was, was kind of cool, yeah. you know, I mean, to be able to stand up there and have three American flags. And the anthem playing for all three of us was incredible, mm -hmm. so it was mm -hmm. awesome. And, and not only that, but that was also, to my knowledge, the only year that three U.S. women qualified for the then the champion final. series final, now yes. called the Grand Prix final. Right. Uh, yourself, Michelle Kwan, and Tara Lipinski. Yeah. Uh, and it was, I, I believe that event was three Americans, three Russians. It, it was, I believe. You're yeah. right. Yeah. So, uh, and funny how history kind of repeats itself mm -hmm. because although certainly since then Japan has really mm -hmm. turned up the heat and has mm -hmm. burst onto the scene, uh, Americans and Russians still assume you know top five, top you know six right. positions at the World Championships. What what differences do you see between the Russian field that you were up against, you know, twenty you know back in the '90s versus the Russians today, who are really dominating the women's scene? Well, you know, I think. One of the things I really notice is every year there's a different Russian that's coming out that's amazing and, and topping the field. So you don't quite see the longevity and the same skater year after year after year per se, mm -hmm. um, like you did back in the 90s. I mean, you had Arena Slavskaya, you had Maria Butraskaya, you had so many other ones. I mean, and then it was a pretty stable group, mm -hmm. much like the Americans were kind of this same top four about. Um, 
with like Michelle Kwan and myself and Nicole Bobek and Tara Lipinski. Yep. So, um, you know, now you see, you know, the Americans have their four, but the Russians keep having a new one come out, and it's like, oh my gosh, where are they? Have where are all these girls coming from? Because <laughs> one's better than the next. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. Now, take us back. What was it like uh, on practice ice with skaters like, like Irina Sitskaya, who <laughs> looked like just like would zip around the ice with yeah. crazy speed? What was that like? And, and some of those other big. I mean, Tara was also. You know, you. I mean, you share practice ice with. Tara, Michelle, Irina, you were in sharky waters. <laughs> Those were I tough, was. Tough women. You know, it, I think you're so focused on yourself. You, you you notice them, but you don't notice them. I mean, you yeah. know they're there, and you know that they're whizzing around, and you know that they're good, and you mm -hmm. know you're trying to beat them. So mm -hmm. you just kind of put your own blinders on and do your own thing. I think probably a funny story that I can relate to you is my first NHK that I went to was in 1989. And I'm on practice ice with Christy Yamaguchi, in, which I'd been on practice ice before with, okay. um, but Midori Ito. And I stood there at the wall, and I'm watching Midori jump, you know, four tie. And yeah. Carol's like, my coach says, you need to go practice. <laughs> and I'm like, but that's Midori Ito, you know. <laughs> so, like, to watch, you know, be on practice with Midori at that point was, like, something so eye-opening. And to mm -hmm. see her jump so high and her triple axle, I mean, it was just... Mm -hmm. Incredible. So, like, those are things that I remember growing up. You know, seeing some some people on TV, and then all of a sudden you're on a practice with them. It's it's kind of mind blowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did mind games ever happen on those practice sessions? There was talk that certain factions of skaters or certain you know skaters and federations would try and play mind games to get under the skin of other skaters. Were you ever aware of that? Did that yeah. ever happen? I'm sure it probably did, but I didn't. I didn't really pay attention to it. You know, I think I was okay. so into like what I was doing and what what. Mm, my focus needed to be to have a great practice to prepare for a competition mm -hmm. that I'm sure probably some things happened, people cutting you off or making you go around again kind of thing. I'm sure it did, but I didn't really pay too much attention right, to right. it. Were you ever coached to sort of ignore that if it, if it emerged or if it came mm, up? No, not really. I okay. Mean, okay. <laughs> so breaking down the U.S. ladies mm -hmm. here at the event, I mean, mm -hmm. this had a bit of a bit of everything. It right? did. So you it had did. Ashley, you know, winning the event. Yeah. Mariah Bell bursting onto this, not mm -hmm. bursting onto the scene, but really putting it together, mm -hmm. uh, getting the top score on the free skate, right, and making the podium. So lots of buzz now about Mariah Bell's, mm -hmm. you know, world team prospects, mm -hmm. Olympic prospect prospects, because the U.S. gets really excited <laughs> whenever do. you know a new U.S. Yeah. woman sort of comes on. And then Grace of Gold really having difficulty here and not putting it together. How do you break it all down? What's your assessment? Well, I think, you know, Ashley's just riding that wave of confidence from Worlds. You know, I mean, for her to be the silver medalist at Worlds, I think she has figured out how to put her best foot forward and how to get herself to be in the right mindset to do the great performances, which I hope she continues to keep. I mean, it's really exciting to see. Mariah Bell, I've always enjoyed her skating. I think she's... She's such an interesting skater. She's beautiful. She's light, but gritty too. And I, I love that about her. And I think she can definitely shake the top up if someone has an off day and she skates like she did here. Mm -hmm. um, Gracie, you know, I I, I feel bad for Gracie because that, that's a rough position to be in. I know she had taken some time off. And I think it's hard to come back when you've been off and to get yourself back into shape to compete against the top skaters in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. you really have to be in a good place. Not to skate your perfect program here, but you. It, this is an important competition because I feel like this competition is almost the start looking towards the Olympics mm -hmm. for 2018 because mm -hmm. this is the season before, it's the first event. Um, you know, Gracie has so much talent and I know she, she can come back from this and I think she's a fighter. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that she can find a good place, get her training, or continue, I guess, training hard so she can be a contender for the Olympics, obviously. Mm -hmm. Can you relate somewhat in terms of, you know, Gracie coming down from, you know, being first after the short program of the World Championships mm -hmm. in front of a home crowd in mm -hmm. Boston, she like blew the top off, mm -hmm. and then there was all this buzz that, wow, this could be Gracie's moment, mm -hmm. and then she did slip down, and yeah. then unfortunately off the podium. I mean, you've mm -hmm. been in positions where you were first after the short program, and the long program didn't necessarily right, come yeah. together as you would have liked. What sort of things helped you to, to progress and keep going that you know might be of help or wisdom to her? You know, I think you know, every skater's different. I mean, I know with m my skating, Carol and Glenn, we, we would do run-throughs every week, 
when it was season time and the programs were ready with my costume on with a six minute warm up to just try and simulate that every week. So it just became another day mm -hmm. rather than the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if that would be something. And I think you know, she just needs to just continue her training, right. you know, get herself into a place where the programs are a little bit more natural and she's not having to think her way through the program. Mm -hmm. She can just let muscle memory do the program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I recall, speaking of costumes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you training with your costume on and so mm -hmm. forth to feel, to visualize. It was at this event 20 years ago that you came out with tails in the short program. Oh yeah, my that. tuxedo so show, dress. Which, which at the time was like, oh, so daring. We, you know, we've come pretty far where, yeah, we you know, have. lady skaters can wear cat suits mm -hmm. and, and body suits and mm -hmm. so forth. Don't they, they're not necessarily stuck to a skirt. Right. Uh, Tell us about that, you know, take us back to that choice in costume, which at the time was, wow, there's a, there's a unique <laughs> choice. Well, I mean, I was skating to, there's no business like show business. Yep. And um, my costume designer, Lauren Sheehan, had sent me a drawing and I, I just fell in love with it. I thought it was just really, it, it fit the music and it fit the tone of the program. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit, like with the tails, kind of a little bit dressier, but fun too, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I think she just had such a great eye for creating a dress by what you're skating to. Mm, mm. So. Okay. Now, there's other U.S. women that, of course, weren't here at Skate America mm -hmm. who will be contenders at the U.S. National Championships right. and probably, you know, it'll be a, a real fight for who makes that world team and the, the three spots that will go to Finland. Amongst the other skaters who aren't here that you think will be part of that mix uh, of contenders, who, who do you pick and, and, and what's your oh. assessment of, of how they're doing and where they're at? Well, I think Mariah Nagasa, you definitely have to consider her. I mean, I, for her to have had the boot problems at Nationals, to shut it all out, yeah. skate great, and then be able to be named to the team after because Polina was injured, and then to skate so well at Worlds. I think she's really worked hard to work, get her, her jumps clean, mm -hmm. um, you know, and they're not always they are some of them still have a little bit but they've gotten more consistent and I think as time goes on and she keeps working on it I think she looks really strong going into this season mm -hmm. um, and just got a I think a personal best score of 73 in the right. short program in at the autumn classic right. that's huge that's huge yeah so I mean I think she's definitely someone to watch for I mean she's just you know and good for her especially after you know 2014 being mm -hmm. on the podium and then being taken up you know not named for the team for the olympics that had to have been absolutely heartbreaking for her and for her to continue on and say no i'm going to keep fighting you talk about those get up moments with this new get up campaign i mean i think of her when i i right. think of that um i think paulina edmonds obviously is beautiful i heard she's injured again her foot's injured mm -hmm. so she's pulled out of her first grand prix i believe she was named to go to nhk so we'll see if she goes there um, you know, she's always beautiful too. I think for her, it's just staying healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, she keeps having these injuries, and and I think with her too, she was so young and 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 thin, and, and she's she's grown up a bit, yep. and you know, it's a little bit harder on the body when when things change. And I think hopefully she can stay stay healthy because she's a beautiful skater. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Were you surprised that you know she had a splash an event at the U.S. Nationals last year as she ended up having? A little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you just can never counter out. I think she's got so much enthusiasm and so much confidence in herself, mm -hmm. which then can help bring those performances when she really needs it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else on the perimeter that you're sort of you're watching for uh, wow. the U.S. ladies? That well, I mean, I think time? Mariah Bell definitely now. I mean, yeah. she because she's had some some success at nationals as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's always someone that comes up that just knocks their socks off <laughs> and, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's always fun to watch. I think yeah. that's what makes the U.S. Championship so much fun. Great. Well, it's been a real pleasure talking with yeah, you, reflecting you. On, <laughs> on your career and, and the U.S. ladies this season and, and the, the international season. Thanks so much for taking the thank time to talk to so us. Thank you so much. Thanks.